Hey everyone, this is Eric, KJ4YZI. Got a video here on something that's not a ham radio, but it is something that a lot of preppers and uh, doomsday shit hits the fan people want. And uh, even for kids to play around with, or you're hiking or fishing with your wife or children and you want to use something that's not a Bofung and does not require a license. This is the Family Radio Service, FRS. And this is an alternative to something like you'd find in Walmart from a Midland or a Cobra. This is Luton, which I've done a couple videos on their products before. Uh, this is a FRS radio that is fully compatible with other FRS radios and Bofung ham radios with ease and simple to use built in so there's not a whole lot of features that can confuse you but the features you need are there and uh, I want to show you about these and we're going to go through what is FRS and what they do so let's get to it okay so FRS radio family radio service okay and license free no license needed FRS radio is 462 through 467 megahertz channelized across the United States with the same channels so uh, out of the box they are ready to use with 22 channels something like this Bofung was not ready out of the box you have to program this for the frequencies only that you're allowed to use so you have to find the frequencies load the software hook it up and then hope that your little kid doesn't grab the wrong memory that you're using for the local ham radio repeater and transmit through it like it's a toy uh, these are strictly 22 channels for general purpose anything you can use them for uh, hunting and fishing kids to play with them camping public service events security at a store or whatever you want they're they're ready for that okay in the manual here uh, it shows you about the features and uh, again not very confusing at all only a few features that you need on here not a bunch of the stuff that you don't all right and uh, in here, it'll show you about how to charge it and uh, what to do, what not to do. So, very important you read the manual. Here in the optional accessories, okay, first let's go over the radios and I'll show you what's in the accessories. So, you have your PTT button right on the front, your power button, your function button, and your up and down. Up and down is selectable for volume or channel up and down, okay. On the top, you have your charging port and your headphone mic port. So the charging port surprisingly is USB. Five volt. Okay, so the good thing about that is with the charging cords that it comes with, it has a regular USB on one side and it has a type B mini on the other. It looks it fits the identical one for like a Samsung. This will only charge, this will not pass data to your phone or your radio. Even though it will fit in your phone and charge, it's not passing data. But with these cables, the radios come with the AC adapter to USB. This is a 5 volt, 2 amp block. This will charge your cell phone or your tablet. You can use that for that. Or you can use it for your USB cable here to plug into your radio. All right, so. One positive for this, for the people that are uh, preppers and uh, extremists, is you can get the, the solar power battery bank on Amazon or eBay, and it charges in the sun. It's got its built-in battery. You can charge your phones and all your devices that are USB with that. And now with this, because the Bofung will not charge on USB. This has to be put in with the drop-in charger. So... Another good thing to have for these, for the people that are using portable radios, you can charge these with solar power with the little unit I told you about. And if all of a sudden I get flooded with comments, I'll post a couple links uh, in the comment section to what I'm talking about. Uh, it would be a great solar battery bank for these. So you get two USB cables with two charging blocks here. And of course, 
two lanyards so that if the kids are playing with them or if you're fishing, you can throw this around your neck and tie this right around the back. That way it doesn't, what you can do is put this around your neck and then put this in your top pocket. That way it doesn't fall if you bend over, all right? Uh, so that's a good thing. Now in optional accessories, the optional accessories are USB cable and programming software. Well, I have that right here. A standard prolific USB to serial adapter with the type B on the end. This is for PC connectivity with the software, which is here. Okay, and you can't change the frequencies or the channels with the software because they are standardized channels from the radio uh, allocation table. So they they are standard, but you can change things like power save mode and uh, turn the beep on and off. You don't want the beep. Uh, a couple other features. The DCS codes are very important. These will interface with stuff like uh, Midland and Cobra radios. However, to, to interface it with the other one I was telling you, the, the uh, Bofung here, to interface it with this, you have to either go into software and disable the DCS codes, which is digital coded squelch, or find out what code this is on and put it in this radio. That way they're both on the same DCS code or else channel 4, uh, 462.6375 or whatever frequency it is. In fact, here. Frequency. Yeah. 462.6375 will not work on channel 4 unless the tones are the same. So you have to go into software and just, it's very simple, I'll show you here in a second, change the tones in this. But it's good because that way if you're in a campground or a common place where a lot of people have these and you're on channel 6 and somebody else is on channel 6, you can set your own code on here so that you won't be listening to their channel 6. It'll be separate, okay? So I'll show you that in software in a second. Uh, the buttons here, like I showed you, to turn them on, you hold power on for about three seconds. Well, that one was already on. Okay. So turn it on, hold it three seconds. Power on. Four. You hear it's voice guided. So he says power on, you're on channel four. By up and down is volume. That's max volume, okay? If you want to change channel up and down, you press function. Now. Three, two, one. Now you know what channel you're on, because he's telling you what channel. Once you let go of it for about two seconds, it's going to beep, and now you're back in the volume mode with these. So we'll go back up to channel four. Three, four. Channel four, and this one's already on here. Okay, so they're both on channel four. Hello, test one, two. Hello, te there we go. Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. So, hello, test. I must have uh, changed the code on one of these already with the software, so I'm guessing that this one is interfacing with the Bofung radio. Okay. Test one, two. And these things sound amazing. I have to say, the, the camera doesn't do justice for this, but the audio is amazing. They do sound very good. Okay. Uh, but here is an example of Hello, test. Oh, this one works, too. Hello, test. One, two. One, two, three. One, two, one, two. So, obviously, I changed something in the settings I didn't pay attention to. They're both talking with the Bofung radio, uh, but there's a code from one to the other that's not correct. But uh, the camera can't pick up the audio. The audio on these things are great. They're very clear, crystal clear. And expect, again, expect a range of about a mile to two miles. Don't be fooled by the midlands that tell you they're 15 to 20 mile range. The range for these are calculated on a line of sight, unobstructed view. If you could see 20 miles from roof, uh, from mountaintop to mountaintop, 
you may get 20 miles out of a radio if you can see 20 miles with nothing in between but with atmospheric conditions and different things uh, you're limited to basically the line of sight uh, you can see a couple miles if you can see the person in a couple miles with unobstructed view that's what you'll get out of the radio that's UHF and VHF that's a whole nother video so let me go ahead and connect these up and show you the the basic programming software to turn these off you hold the power button five seconds takes a little long but at least you won't accidentally turn it off in your pocket so you have to hold it for five seconds to turn them off okay uh, let me put up a programming table here uh, or a uh, frequency chart here right after this so you can pause the video and you can jot down the frequencies if you need to put them in your Bofong radio you'll know exactly what channels are what frequencies Okay, so you have your software, I assume, already installed, the M860 software. So we're going to double-click that make this real fast. Uh, first, you want to go plug your radio in, turn it on, go to Setting, and set the COM port. Mine is COM, uh, COM port 4. Yours will be different, may be different, but uh, pick your COM port accordingly, and then go to Program, and click Read from Radio. This is going to download. It only takes a second. Now, all these freak and then it'll read off the number you're on. All these frequencies here, 1 through 22, cannot be changed. However, I did find something very cool. If you go here to CHT, you can add memories to this. So I'm on 26 memories, so it gave me an extra four channels. I programmed in 23 and 24 a two local amateur radio repeaters, and it does work. Very cool if you have a ham license and a close by UHF repeater or you can just listen and monitor. You cannot change these frequencies here. It will not let you. Uh, however, you can add a few more frequencies and your tones. So when I told you before about interfacing with a Bofung, watch closely. Channel 1, receive and transmit frequency are the same because you're on simplex. The I set the tone here for an example in this video. You'll see each frequency has their own code for decoding and encoding its own DC or PL tone, CTCSS. Now I changed mine here to just for example, you get all these here. I changed mine to the last D7541. Transmit and receive, decode and encode. This way, unless somebody else is using the same DCS tone, I won't hear them, they won't hear me. So on your Bofung, you'd want to set the receive and transmit frequency, basically the transmit frequency on your Bofung with no offset, and you would want to set the code, the DCS code, the same here, and you can interface with your Bofung. If not, it's only going to talk between the two. It's not going to talk to the Bofung radio. If you're just interested in talking with each other, on the two Luton, you can actually set these, uh, let's see, 71, 60, 69. So you can set these where they were b before, and uh, they'll all be the same. Okay, your timeout timer here, squelch level. Don't mess with the frequency here. The radio is only designed to operate on UHF, so it's not going to transmit VHF. It's a generic software for other vid uh, other radios. Uh, battery save and, and uh, volume, so... Uh, very cool that you can add in the ham radio repeaters. When you're done, go to program, hit write to radio, and it should write it to the radio. And to test, we will test the repeater here right now. Let's see. Okay, let's try it out. That is the amateur radio repeater south of me, and uh, nobody is on it right now, but uh, very cool that you can do that, listen and possibly transmit if you have a license to do so. Hope this video was uh, interesting and informative. Thanks for watching. Check out my other videos, KJ4YZI73.